Well, folks, it's springtime. Uh, temperatures are seasonal springtime temperatures. Uh, we've got a few showers coming through here and there. It's warming up during the day. Water temperatures are warming up. This is a time when everything comes to life. Deer start dropping their fawns. Turkeys are breeding. Fish are starting to make spawning runs. You got stripers running up in the rivers. Here soon, bass are going to the banks bedding. Flathead catfish are waking up, coming to life and biting. It's just good fishing all around. Good time to be in the outdoors. It's also real challenging on what exactly to do when you're a sportsman and are blessed with the opportunities to hunt and fish and different ways in different places. It's hard to pick and choose right now. Uh, salt water's getting ready to blow up. Uh, there'll be some good fishing coming on here. It's turkey season. It's a good time to be in the woods turkey hunting. Great time to be on the water fishing. Said it's hard to pick and choose. I am uh, real bad about once I, I'm kind of compulsive uh, OCD or something. Once I get in, I, if I go into woods turkey hunting tomorrow morning and I get some birds gobbling at me, I will be locked in on that for until I kill one. So it's kind of the same thing with fishing. If I go out there fishing this afternoon and the rods are folded over continuously, that's the only thing I'll have on my mind. So. Springtime's a beautiful time. It's a good time to be in, in the woods, on the water. I thank the good Lord I'm able to do it. Let's go fishing. First stop is the bait man. Bait man. All right, I'm insane. All right, let's see where the bait's at. Must be the ones he's getting them from. A gazillion of them. looking at got a big tank big filtration system water coming in a lot of fish good aeration going on there We've got it covered too keep the sunlight off of it Got a heck of a setup. He uh, moves a lot of bait through here. It's a good setup. I put the bait in these bags with some paper towels. Put them here in my cooler. I'll be ready to fish cut bait for the next few days. And that was your tour of the bait man. Magic bait man. These are uh, all female shad too. All females, they swim better. He culls them out to make sure they're females. Just kidding, guys. Doesn't really do that. Alright, guys, I rolled up here into the river section and uh, there's no water moving. So, uh, it's not the best time to be up here to catch water moving either. It's it's around lunchtime. So, I put out some uh, baits on the bottom. We're going to see if we can pick some fish off. Uh, it's always kind of a gamble up here. Uh, there's no re water release schedule. So, you're kind of at the mercy of what's going on with the utility company. So, uh, now if they turn it on, it could get good in a hurry. We'll just have to see what happens. Uh, for now, I'm just going to do some hole hopping and see if I can get a fish. I was sitting there at the front of the boat and I heard a noise. I'm like, what is that noise? One of these rods ripping off through there. It's a monster. 
I don't think it's a monster, but we got a fish. Straight underneath the boat. Hooked up. Went to drifting and finally got a fish to bite. I think he's in two other lines. There he is. The watery blue. Got some mud on him. Alright, got one on this planter board. Six rods out. Three down from the line. with red fin shad, large one, and uh, white perch. Put these back. Growing it bigger. Blue catfish. That's a blue catfish, that anal fin. The outer part of it's very flat. Real easy to distinguish that from a channel cat that way. Coloration gets kind of similar during different parts of the year, especially around the spawn. Uh, these can get kind of dark and mottled up a little bit, start to look like a channel cat. But that anal fin is always a quick giveaway. All right, guys, I'm gonna show you what I'm doing here uh, on my map. Uh, this is the drift I made right through there. You can see that I put about I don't know four or five fish in the boat on that drift. Wind's kind of got me coming to this point, so what I'm gonna do is just cruise across the lake and get set up over here. I'm hoping if I look at what that pattern is doing, I should be able to drift that same line all the way back up in this creek and fish the entire creek on one drift without having to reset. That's a good example of you can see the path your boat took. And hopefully now, sometimes it changes. You get around these points and wind pushes different, but I'm hoping I can go over to about right here, set the boat, hopefully drift right up through there. As always, watch your drift speed. Uh, we're still in fairly cool waters, about 58 degrees. So I'm trying to keep everything right around a half a mile an hour. And if that means using a drift sock to slow the boat down, then that's what you have to do. Uh, if you don't have a drift sock, you can use buckets. Uh, I've seen people do that. I've seen people rope tarps together and make it work. Drift socks make it a lot easier, but uh, if you don't have them, buckets and some other homemade devices will work to slow you down. The main thing is get your boat slowed down. All right, hooked up again. Went for a long pull without a bite. Probably went 30 minutes. Never had a rod move. It's on the planter. Still small fish, but it's fish. Little bitty. It's alright to be little bitty. The old town. The hook in another one. Oh. Couple of teeners today. It could have been worse. Damn. 